Theology. The theology. Theology. It's an odd word if you think about it. It sounds like it could be a cross between some obscure field in astronomy or maybe earth sciences. Perhaps that's because it sounds so much like geology. But whatever we call theology, why does it matter? The question of theology significance is one of the most important questions we could ever ask or try to answer. I hope we see that a little more clearly by the end of our time together today. The word theology originally comes from Greek and means something like the study of God. It means knowing God and knowing about him. It means thinking carefully about God, not only who he is and what he's like, but how he relates to everything else. In fact, that makes a pretty good definition. Theology is knowing God and all things in relation to God. Now, when I say this, I'm thinking particularly of Christian theology. There are, of course, lots of non-Christian ways of trying to learn about God and how things would relate to God or the gods, him or her or it or them. But when Christians talk about theology, we're talking about something really specific. We're talking about knowing God as the creator of the universe who is also our savior. We're talking about knowing our father who has loved us from before the foundations of the earth and knowing him in his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and knowing the Holy Spirit who lives inside us and uh, renews us and gives us the faith that we need to walk in the ways of the Lord. If you know the Father, the Son, and the Spirit in this way, congratulations, you are a theologian. A theologian is someone who does theology. I don't know why someone who does geology isn't called a geologian, or maybe a theologian should be called a theologist. Whatever word we use for someone who does theology, the actual practice of knowing God isn't just about information or cleverness or arguments or mystical experiences. It's about personal relationship. Of course, to have a real relationship with anyone, you have to know important things about them too. Can I say I know my wife if I don't know stuff about her? I love you so much. I love you too, thanks honey. What do you love about me? You know, everything. Nothing in particular, I just, I just love you. Oh. I'm just so glad we're together However long that's been. However long that's been? Do you even know how long we've been married? What's our anniversary? That stuff's not important, darling. The important thing is, I love you. Come on, babe, don't you believe me? Mm. You just called me darling and babe. Do you even remember my name? Can we not talk about this and cuddle? Yeah, we cannot talk about this. Where are you going? Babe? Are you mad? Darling? Not a good situation, right? Now, that doesn't mean my whole marriage with Kate, her name is Kate, is about information and there's no emotion or mystery. But friends, you've got to know your spouses and want to keep learning about them because you love them. It's the same with theology. Knowing about God and knowing God in the mysteriousness of the relationship of faith works the same way as a healthy marriage. In any deep relationship, marriage or otherwise, real knowledge and real mystery come together. Like the mystery that Christians believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but that doesn't mean we think they're three gods. God being somehow three, yet one, is the doctrine of the Trinity. Doctrine is just a fancy word for Christian teaching. Christian doctrine is Christian teaching. If you remember our definition of theology as knowing God and all things in relation to God, 
you might realize that all things seems like it's saying theology could cover pretty much anything in the known universe, which is ridiculous, but also true. Theology deals with everything, but not in every way. We learn about God and how everything relates to him by listening carefully to the Bible. Theology can talk about anything, as long as it talks about that thing in relation to God and as long as it says what it says in line with what the Bible teaches. So theologians can talk about everything, and we do like to talk. But practically speaking, most of the time we stick pretty close to core Christian doctrine taught by the Bible for training people in the church. Doctrines like who God is, his work of creation, especially human beings, the brokenness of sin and the good news of salvation in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the church, heaven, hell. Theology that deals with core Christian teaching, by the way, is technically called dogmatics, which doesn't sound like an obscure scientific field. It's worse. Dogmatics. It sounds like meditation crossed with mechanical engineering like doing yoga with a robot puppy. You might be starting to see a pattern here. Theology, doctrine, dogmatics. Theologians are pretty great at using lots of complicated words. Those three words are just the tip of the iceberg. And sometimes that means your brain is the Titanic. But theologians haven't cornered the market on big words. Every special field of study does this, all of them astronomy and geology, philosophy and medicine, law and engineering. Even the skilled trades use tons of special vocabulary learned over years of training. If I tried to talk to a trained electrician at his or her own level of expertise, I'd be just as lost as if they talked to me about my area of expertise. And I'm a fifth grade teacher. I have to be an expert in almost everything. Here's the thing. We can't use the depth of theology as an excuse to think it's irrelevant. Nobody should think tearing open a bag of Skittles makes a satisfying meal just because they don't know how to grill a steak. When somebody protests that they can't understand theology or that doctrine is too hard, most of the time that person is selling themselves short. Lots of people are totally willing to put in the work to learn about the tech specs of the new iPhone or the exotic seasonings and prep required to make the dish du jour on the cooking channel or learn the stylistic subtleties of the freshest trends in fashion. That's my favorite. Or the latest engine displacement figures or battery tech in upcoming car models. Everything worth caring about takes a lot of effort, attention, and practice to get good at. Don't tell me theology is too hard or too boring for you when you know every stat about every player in Major League Baseball, or when you've spent weeks building an accurate scale replica of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Minecraft. Still, let's all admit there's more than a grain of truth to the protest that theology is too hard or too boring for a lot of regular Christians. Theologians can learn so much and get so specialized, get our heads so far into the sky that we forget to keep our feet on the ground. Take the person who's way too into iPhones. You know who you are. The more you learn about phones, the less able you are to make any sense to regular people. Here's the difference. It's a big difference. You don't have to know anything about phones. It's purely optional. If you find it interesting, great, you dig in. Theology isn't like that. The Bible says that Christians must grow in our knowledge of God. In fact, the Bible promises that the whole earth will be flooded with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And I'm no geologian, but I'm pretty sure that you literally cannot cover anything more than water covering a giant body of water. So why does theology matter? Theology matters because knowing God matters. God made us to know him with our heads together with our chests and our hands, all of us, like the waters cover the sea. And so the more we understand about God, the more we'll know him, the more we'll enjoy him, and he will change us in the process. And that is good news.
Thanks for stopping by.